you know, in the coaching world, there are, you know, these uh, common phrases of limiting beliefs mm-hmm. or comfort zones that a lot of people operate from. And those there are pretty much the things that'll show up in the relationships that individuals have that will limit them from being. Welcome to the Business Ownership Podcast, brought to you by Awareness Strategies, helping you navigate the waters between entrepreneurship and ownership. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I'm super glad that you're here with us today because I am here with my most amazing guest, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you very much for having me, Michelle, and I look forward to having a conversation with you and also some of the guests. Nice. So give us a little bit of background, who you are and a highlight of your business. Okay, so who I am is a leadership coach to business professionals, and I've been doing it now for approximately six years. But the history of my work experience is such that I break it down into three different phases. And the first phase after my 18 years of uh, getting uh, my life in order was that I uh, served the nation in the U.S. military. Wow. And then I retired and I got into uh, human resources and I served organizations across the globe in uh, defense manufacturing and uh, general manufacturing. And then I also had uh, some stints with some public utility and the like. And I did that for approximately 20 years. And then now I'm getting into what I consider my significant phase of my life and career, where I'm helping individuals achieve uh, some unlimited possibility. I love it. So what made you decide to make that final change to go into and the business coaching side of things? Well, we've all probably heard that, you know, we do the macro or the micro uh, edges of our business. And like that, I looked at my business and the work that I was doing within these organizations to coach and develop a lot of the leaders and organizations and different groups that I wanted to bring it from that 30,000 foot level down to the three foot level where I'm working more one-on-one with those individual leaders and business people. Very fun. So let's get into kind of how you're helping people and, and what is it that you do with them? Well, primarily what I do with them is have, you know, very open and honest conversations with them that they probably are honestly, you know, uncomfortable with because it is about their self-awareness and their self-leadership. And that's where I find a lot of executives, regardless of how uh, effective and successful they are or have been, that they struggle with. Mm -hmm. Uh, More times than not, they are actually stuck in a status quo uh, where they just kind of figure this is the way it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. And it's also getting into conversations around how they're showing up. So the coach training that I had is an ontological theory. (laughs) That's a big word. (laughs) Yes, it is. And I'll explain it really freely. (laughs) And what that, what that means is, is that people, you know, all, we all have multiple different relationships Mm -hmm. and it's how we show up in those relationships. And it's about creating consistency and how we show up and how we show up like me showing up for this uh, podcast today. And the fact that I'm, you know, who I am now and who I will be with any other contact or relationship that I have throughout my day. Consistency. Nice. Once upon a time, and I'm just going to see if you want to demystify this, there used to be this separation of (laughs) state and church of you have your home life and you have your work life, your business life, your home life does not show up in your (laughs) business life unless your spouse is showing up to a corporate party, in which case they had best represent you in the exact same light that you show up at at work, which of course was nearly impossible. How did that transition come about to consistency in this and to what benefit is it? Well, that's a very good question. And quite frankly, that's the work in the ontological theory that I focus on is creating that balance in all the different relationships that we have. And yes, we've heard it said multiple times about we don't want to bring our home life into work. And likewise, we don't want to bring our work home with us. 
and the fact that we are consistently showing up, we are consistently being self-aware about who we're being in all those different relationships, and that we don't have to worry about being somebody different in either of those situations. And those are just two of the basic ones. And then from there, you get into so many different ones that uh, affect how you're showing up and how your overall presence is impacting those people. And also a matter of you surrendering your power, so to say. And this isn't about power over people. This is just simply your own self-control, your self-awareness around what you uh, surrender and what you're able to maintain. Right. So to me, it's just easier <laughs> show up as me because you know putting on facades for other people is rather difficult but i do get dynamics in a relationship right when you go home to your spouse you have certain decision making dynamics that go on and yeah you know, at work there's going to be different dynamics you're not going to treat your spouse when you treat your subordinates in the in the decision making process so how how does one kind of differentiate those nuances and there's aspects of it because usually, and I'm going to generalize, entrepreneurs tend to be a little control freaks. Okay, maybe I'm just talking about myself. And that whole idea or notion of kind of taking that across the board in relationships um, can be daunting. How do you work with that? Well, one of the exercises that I do is a two part uh, exercise around self reporting on a person's values and characteristics, and then also another outside exercise that does pretty much the same thing. So it's kind of like a 360 uh, evaluation, getting input from outside, but also taking and reflecting and looking at your own behaviors, your own values, your own characteristics, and marrying those up so that then there is that balance because you're coming from those places of your values, coming from those places of what your, your core characteristics and strengths are and that they are playing out across any of the relationships you have. So it is a matter of, you know, being a type A personality at work and coming home and being passive aggressive or anything like that. It's, <laughs> it's about the consistency in that behavior across those uh, values and characteristics and principles that you are pretty much more aware of or married to. Nice. Little therapy wouldn't hurt, by the way, if you show up at work and you're an A-type personality, and you're passive aggressive at home, just saying. <laughs> There's a couple of red yeah, flags no. going on there. <laughs> well, then again, too, I'm also not a therapist. So if that's, that dynamic came uh, up, I, I would I certainly... can interject at that point. <laughs> if that's where you find yourself. <laughs> I... Self-referral or whatever. <laughs> exactly. So when when it comes to ontological, what is the definition of that? And And let's get into kind of the semantics of that. Yeah, well, the definition is pretty much what I had said previously. It's about how an individual shows up, how you are being in your relationships. Okay. okay. And are there elements of how one shows up? Well, yeah. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, you know, in the coaching world, there are, you know, these uh, common phrases of limiting beliefs mm -hmm. or comfort zones that a lot of people operate from. And those there are pretty much the things that'll show up in the relationships that individuals have that will limit them from being uh, aware and self-control and how they might act out. And if I might quickly share, I have a client who I'm just about ready to wrap up with who was having some issues around overthinking issues and this individual has since gotten a better grasp of their awareness around how they overthink things before they make decisions. It's almost that point of analysis paralysis. Mm -hmm. And they were surrendering basically their power to be more effective and create more uh, possibility for themselves because of that constantly overthinking things. And this isn't the right move or somebody thought this about me or so on and so forth. So it's that dynamic right there, I think, is the biggest challenge. Right. So when you're working with somebody, are you kind of going in and assessing what their problem areas are and then just addressing those areas? Or how do you how do you kind of do that intake, if you will? Yeah, the, the, 
the questioning is not that I have a specific line of questions that I go in with, because that in and of itself then presents that I'm coming in with an agenda and assuming that an individual has got some sort of issues or problems around their their <laughs> if, self. Hold on, people. If you're one, if you're a person, you have problems. Two, if you're an entrepreneur, you have a lot of problems. <laughs> Three, if you're a successful oh. entrepreneur, you have a ton of problems. <laughs> no, there's I, I I I agree with that, but it's the awareness around those sort of things. Exactly. And that is the struggle that uh most entrepreneurs, business owners, business leaders, and business professionals struggle with quite honestly again mm -hmm. as i said earlier about no matter how successful they've been or are currently at that time there's something that is kind of getting in the way mm -hmm. and it's having those conversations that just simply asking them what is it that they would like some help on that if they knew they wouldn't fail they would take that first step of action towards nice and then it just goes from there so there there is no line that follows or mm -hmm. order that follows that line of that question mm -hmm. it is whatever comes up in that discussion now. Very cool. Have you noticed that there is a tendency or a pattern to people's answers on that? Well, and there may not be and that's fine. Th 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 there is to some degree, and that is mm -hmm. part of what in the coach training that it takes a very dynamic uh, understanding of myself to know that people will tell you stories and it's my ability to be able to listen beyond those stories and get the context. And what I find, and I'm not, I'm just generalizing, but what mm -hmm. I find is that a lot of my clients will have a lot of overwhelm to your point, business owners, entrepreneurs, small business owners, whatever the case might be. They're just overwhelmed, but to them, they don't see it as overwhelmed. It's just that they can give you that laundry list of issues that they are struggling with. And mm -hmm. then it's a matter of having a conversation that can help highlight what is most important for us to focus on that can give them peace of mind and the, you know, the uh, reduction of stress that they might be experiencing or poor health that they might be experiencing and so forth. So there is a lot of impact to that overwhelm, but what area is it affecting their life? Absolutely. And I think a lot of people underestimate kind of that nuance of it in that, in my experience in business, if you're growing your business, you're going to experience overwhelm or the point where you get the to-do list that's it's way too long. It's like, dude, that's not a to-do list. That's a roll of toilet paper that you've been writing on. It's like it's going on and on and on. And and a lot of people say to me things like, oh yeah, the business coaches are a dime a dozen. They they're everywhere. I'm like, they have to be. If you're in business, you need to have a business coach, which means that every business out there should have a business coach. To me, there's not enough of us out here because there, there are, to your point, certain nuances that you will address. And, and when somebody is going through that issue, they need you. And, and to me, it's super important because to your point, when they get to that overwhelm, it's almost like they're, if they are aware that they're overwhelmed, they're ashamed or embarrassed about being there. And to me, it's like, no, that's, that's just business, baby. You are there. That is awesome. That's fantastic. And go talk to Jeffrey. <laughs> Because that's, yeah. that's exactly where you want to be. You want to get to that point because now you know that you have the capacity to be able to do that aspect of business and that there's something, whether it's the mindset or the systems or the whatevers that needs to be kind of hooked in place, but you can't hook those things in place until you get to that point. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I couldn't agree with you more to the point that, you know, you have a lot of business leaders, business owners who struggle with that awareness around what it is that is preventing them from taking on that next big project. I'll give you another quick example of a, a client yeah. that I worked with who wanted to double his business. It mm -hmm. wasn't a, a dollar amount. It was just simply he wanted to double his business. He knew that if he brought on you know, another form of what he does, that he would be able to grow his business 
virtually doubling it. And uh, yet he wasn't able to do this. He had been thinking about it, and working on it and such for a matter of a couple of years. I got introduced to him. And in short order, we sat down and this is very unique to him, but it could be unique to anybody else as well. We looked at what he was doing on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And we found that this man was wasting approximately three to four hours of time that he could have been doing BD, business development. Long story short, he ended up acquiring another business because he was taking the time to focus on that and not focus on the day-to-day -day functionaries that were getting him lost. Second to that is that he also wanted to work out and exercise more regularly and pick up playing his guitar regularly. He accomplished all three of those things. So that's fantastic. I love to hear that because I do think that there's a lot of business owners that think that they can't have that, um, the diversity in their day-to-day -day, um, habits because it'll take away from their business. And I'm like, oh, that's your business. It's fantastic. Go play the piano, go play the guitar, go do the thing. And in fact, I used to kind of look at people and go, okay, how do we make, how do we encourage you to have a four day work week? So that on Fridays, you're just going out golfing or doing whatever, because without giving themselves the permission to be able to do that, it's, it's never going to happen. That is a very good point. That therein lies uh, the self-awareness mm -hmm. and the ability to be able to maintain their personal power and to set boundaries and to not have that FOMO moment, that fear of missing out. Oh my God, if I'm here only four days a week, what about that fifth day? What's going to happen that I might miss out on? And being comfortable with and being um, strong enough and courageous enough that that's the plan that you've elected for yourself. And you highlighted on that just a brief moment ago uh, around habits. And it is perceived that, you know, I'm pretty much a fly by night type of person. I just do whatever I want, whenever I want. But the fact of the matter is, you can talk to many successful, highly successful people. They all have got plans and they all execute daily habits that get them towards accomplishing those plans. So it isn't about being so rigid and so strict in their day-to-day -day routines. It's about that it's driving them towards what it is that they want to achieve. Love it. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you about another Cinderella story that you can share with us. But before I do that, we're going to take a little pause. Are you running a business over seven figures, but still struggling with technology headaches? Pay attention. You do not want to miss this offer. This podcast episode is brought to you by Awareness Strategies, who is offering a custom-built digital adoption roadmap for anyone running a business over seven figures who's wanting to grow their business in the next five years. And it's not just a roadmap. They offer full implementation as well. If that scares the out of you, check out awarenessstrategies.com forward slash roadmap for more details today. The link's in the show's notes. Don't regret not doing this. Do it now. That's awarenessstrategies.com slash roadmap. So I'm super excited. I know you've had a lot of success with a lot of people. Give us another example of a Cinderella story of one of your clients. So uh, another client that I had success with was an individual who they themselves had started their own business in a matter of, uh, I want to say, maybe 18 months before us, our meeting and, and uh, getting to work together. And this individual, again, was kind of in the place of status quo, just kind of figuring that what they had accomplished to that point was the way it was always meant to be, and that they weren't able to take and increase the number of contracts in this particular person's case to build their business and grow their business. And in a matter of a nine month uh, working together, this individual acquired two more contracts and accounts that were twice the amount of the one that he was perfectly comfortable with uh, prior to us working together. Nice. That's awesome. Good for you guys. So we talked about some of the struggles, hitting that kind of glass ceiling on the income. 
feeling or having the <laughs> feeling overwhelmed if you're there, but having the laundry list of of to do items, what are some of the other stumbling blocks that somebody might be having and they're thinking, oh, Jeffrey, I need you so badly right now? It's just attaining any of their, their goals or any major uh, projects that they personally want to take on that could be very related to their careers. And again, I didn't certainly want to highlight any of my uh, stories around it being simply the growth from a financial standpoint. It was also a case where the same individual who doubled their or tripled their their business and 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 they were larger contracts than the previous one, uh, that it was about being able to give them some more clarity in their life, which gave them more peace of mind in their life. And to me, and have heard this countless times while I was in the HR profession and even now in coaching, is that work-life balance, mm -hmm. that ability to be able to find balance in their life and find places that they are struggling to develop and grow in versus just it being uh, career centric. Oh, nice. I know that there's a lot of uh, entrepreneurs that want that peace of mind and understanding that that peace of mind allows you to be more creative, allows you to come up with new ideas, allows you to be more innovative, and it allows you to take on projects that you wouldn't have otherwise. So I know our listeners can relate to that and they're going to want more from you. How do they start that journey with you? They start that journey by, I guess I would share uh, my emails and my phone number, because quite frankly, as much as I love a good referral is that I don't make a single cold call. I give information up, out about who I am and how to contact me. And then it is up to, you, to the individual to reach out and contact me. Nice. So we will, of course, have Jeffrey's links in the show notes. So go ahead and scroll down and click on those links and do it in a new browser because we're not done yet. So Jeffrey, I get to ask you, at what point in life did you know you were especially kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? Um, probably four to five years before I got into it. <laughs> it was <laughs> the... <laughs> Yeah, it was it was the uh, sense that and, and I had a history with it, I guess, in a sense, because uh, my father was an entrepreneur right. at his own business and he was highly successful in it up until the moment that he retired. Nice. And so there was that model through my father and his building his business, starting his business and building his business and being highly successful in it. But it certainly wasn't anything that I aspired to through my career. So I again, spent 21 years in the military, certainly not an entrepreneur uh, mindset there. <laughs> and then I got into the corporate world and the private industry and focused on that. But then it was in those last few years before I stepped down and, and actually hung my own shingle that it was like, I should be doing better than this and helping more people than this. And that's when I made the shift and the change. Beautiful. I love it. So you've been absolutely amazing. Any last words for our peeps? No, all I could say is, is that, you know, if you're looking to make a significant transformation in your life, I'd love to have a conversation with you to see where we can go with that and what possibility might exist for you by working together. Nice. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I know how valuable it is. Thank you very much, Michelle. It was a pleasure. Awesome. Peeps, this is Michelle Nedelec. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe to the show, share it with your friends. We love helping entrepreneurs grow. Are you running a business over seven figures but still struggling with technology headaches? Pay attention. You do not want to miss this offer. This podcast episode is brought to you by Awareness Strategies, who is offering a custom-built digital adoption roadmap for anyone running a business over seven figures who's wanting to grow their business in the next five years. And it's not just a roadmap. They offer full implementation as well. If that scares the out of you, check out awarenessstrategies.com forward slash roadmap for more details today. The link's in the show's notes. Don't regret not doing this. Do it now. That's awarenessstrategies.com slash roadmap.